I'm Sheriff T.K. Waters. This is a critical incident community briefing by the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Our agency has prepared this briefing consistent with this administration's commitment to openness and transparency to the public that we serve. Now, the Chief of Professional Standards will deliver the currently available information pertaining to this critical incident. I'm Chris Brown, the Chief of Professional Standards for the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office. Today we're releasing information regarding an officer involved shooting that occurred in the 5300 block of Laney Road in Jacksonville, Florida on February 2nd, 2023. You will see video footage and other currently available information related to the case, all of which will provide you with a better understanding of what happened. When investigating an incident like this, investigators must often interview numerous witnesses, review many hours of video footage, and analyze a significant amount of forensic evidence. These investigations can often take up to a year or more to complete. As such, we are still at the very early stages of our investigation, so our understanding of this incident may change as additional evidence is collected and reviewed. We do not draw any conclusions regarding whether the officers acted appropriately with respect to the law or JSO policy until all of the facts are known and the investigation is completed. In this presentation, you will see video camera footage of the incident. A word of caution. The images and information that are about to be presented may be graphic. When a police officer uses force to arrest someone or to defend against an attack, it can be disturbing and difficult to watch. Viewer discretion is advised. The officer involved shooting on Laney Road resulted in the death of Thomas Edwin Gray. Gray was 60 years of age at the time of his death. He was a convicted felon and as such was prohibited from legally carrying a firearm. I'm going to share the timeline of events that led to the officer involved shooting on February 2nd, 2023. We are sharing this information to provide the public with a complete understanding of what information was known to law enforcement as they made critical decisions during their interactions with him on that day. Around 11.20 a.m. on February 2nd, 2023, Gray spoke with the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office Police Emergency Communications Officer, also referred to as a dispatcher, on the telephone and stated he was suicidal. In response to Gray's threats of suicide, patrol officers responded to his home. Once officers were outside his home, Gray began making verbal threats to shoot the officers. Shortly after noon, a dispatcher called Gray on the telephone to establish communication with him. During this call, Gray stated that he was intoxicated, holding a loaded pistol, and made the statement, no one is taking me anywhere without bloodshed. Gray told the dispatcher he was in physical pain and added, if an officer tries to come through my front door, I'm going to shoot him in the face. During the call, Gray fired a round from his firearm. He stated he was suicidal with violent tendencies. It is believed that this was the same gunshot heard by the officers outside of the residence. The following audio captures excerpts of Gray's conversation with the police dispatcher while police were outside. JFRD is there to help you. The sheriff's office? Yes, sir. They're who there the to help. Who the sent them? You. They're there to help you, sir. Um. Okay. Here's what you need to tell them. I am drunk. I have a core of liquor, and I have a loaded pistol, and nobody is taking me anywhere without bloodshed. Do you understand? Uh, let me see. Every yeah, yeah, safety's off and the hammer's back. There we go. Okay, okay, so you have the gun on you? I have my gun in my hand and it's pointed out my front door. And if an officer tries to come through my front door, I am going to shoot him in the face. Okay, do you, is there anybody else now in the Now, let me understand. You f***ing under <laughs> Damn it! Did you hear that? That's a bullet going through my front door. Because I became suicidal and violent. And I warned her of my suicidal and violent tendencies. Upon learning that Gray's girlfriend might possibly be inside the Laney Road home and in danger, the on-scene officers requested the SWAT unit respond. SWAT unit members arrived on scene and configured themselves tactically around the Laney Road home. Gray remained barricaded inside the residence. Officers began negotiating with Gray over a loudspeaker, encouraging Gray to put down his firearm 
come out of the house and comply with police directives. Gray remained verbally combative, yelling obscenities at the officers. Police attempted to engage in negotiations with Gray for over an hour as he remained barricaded within his home. Eventually, Gray walked to his front door, which was open, and laid down in the doorway. Gray placed a firearm and cell phone outside on the porch in front of him. A few minutes later, Gray, still lying in the threshold, reached outside and picked up his cell phone and gun. Gray placed his cell phone inside the house and kept the firearm in his hand. Then, kneeling at the threshold, Gray pointed his gun at multiple officers and fired at them. In response, six officers returned fire, hitting Gray. Gray died of his injuries on scene. The following video footage captures Gray at the doorway of his residence. This footage, which was not captured by a body-worn camera, has no sound. In the footage, we see Gray lay his gun down, pick it back up, and then fire in the direction of the officers. The officers then return fire. Due to their respective positions, the officers' body-worn cameras did not visually capture the fatal shooting. However, the officers' body-worn cameras did capture sound before and during the shooting. To provide you with a more complete information of the events that preceded the shooting, we are now providing you with body-worn camera footage that captures the sound environment of the critical incident. Again, due to the officers' position, this body-worn camera footage does not visually capture the shooting. Unless you were literally like behind that this shed right here. I mean that that'll give you about what we see, but not not much more. Yeah, you probably wouldn't see it actually. Yeah, Tom is crawling out, we can get you help you need. You probably have to be a crawl, to be honest with you. Hold on, he's reaching. Guns on the doorstep. Out of his hands, he threw it out the door. Well, Ooh. could you go grab it? I'm gonna try, dude. Get that out of the equation. Yeah. Pistol. It's still right, in right in front of him. Right in front of him. He's still refusing to comply. We're getting the robot up. We're gonna see if we can get closer and maybe grab the pistol. Don't reach for that gun now, sir. Well, Drop it. Alright, what do we shots got? Shots fired, shots fired! What do we got? He's laying in the threshold. Alright, is he hit? Stay on him. Oh, I'm on him. Officers conducted a protective search of the residence immediately after the shooting out of concern that Gray's girlfriend may have been harmed when officers heard the initial gunshot from inside the residence. 
Besides Gray, no one else was located within the residence. After the shooting, investigators located Gray's girlfriend, unharmed, at another location. Crime scene detectives searched Gray's residence. These detectives recovered Gray's farm underneath his body. Gray's farm was a loaded Ruger 9mm pistol. Forensic farms examiners determined that a spent casing recovered from the residence came from Gray's firearm. The next step in this investigation involves an independent investigation and review of the actions of the officers by the state attorney's office. The state attorney's office will decide whether the actions of the officers were lawful. After the conclusion of the criminal investigation by the state attorney's office, the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office will begin an administrative investigation into the officers' actions to determine if they were within agency policy. This begins with the convening of a Response to Resistance Review Board in which officers are compelled to provide testimony about their actions during the incident. The Response to Resistance Review Board will then decide whether the officers violated any policy during the incident. The determinations made by this board will be submitted to the sheriff for final review and decision. As stated earlier, JSO does not draw conclusions about the officer's conduct with regards to the law or our policies until the investigation has been completed. On behalf of Sheriff Waters and the Jacksonville Sheriff's Office, thank you for your time and attention.